And I want to send a warning as Jesus did. Be vigilant, be watchful, because the devil would like nothing more that to get you offended. Why? Because offense. You see, he knows that you are here in a place, strategic place, where you're going to, your life, your heart, your life is going to be changed. And it is what will enable you to go out, to have great witness, great power, and great grace. But if he can get you to get to that place of offense, And let me tell you, like Jesus says, it is impossible that no offense would come. Especially right here in this place. That's exactly what the devil is going to want to do. I love what Paul, uh, Paul, I believe he wrote the book of Hebrews, but it's not a a 100% sure. But whoever wrote it, wrote in Hebrew 12, 15, see to it that no one misses out on the grace of God so that no root of bitterness springing up causes trouble and thus contaminates many. You know, when you get offended, it will affect you, but it will also affect others. You know why? Because Jesus says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. And I'm not just talking here to Bible school students. I'm talking here to future ministers. Because if your heart has been contaminated, poisoned and contaminated, whatever is going to come out of your heart will be contaminated. Amen. Hallelujah. So I want to talk to you about this this morning, about that offense. Because You see, when we think in the Bible, when we read all those verses in the New Testament that talk about offense, it's the word, the Greek word, skandalon. And that word skandalon, it's interesting that they use that word. It's a word that talks about a trap. Why? Because offense is the number one trap that the devil will use to catch you to stop you, to destroy you, maybe to put your life on hold. And that word scandalon, it was actually interesting. I was in Africa one time and one of my students came to me and says, Audrey, my parents were missionaries in, 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 in Africa and, and they remember seeing people in the jungle use these, those, using those traps. And that word scandalon talks about, you know, it's a trap made out of bamboo. And so what they would do, they would build that cage out of bamboo. And inside the cage, there were like a little stick, a movable stick that was attached inside the cage. And on that stick, they would attach bananas. And they would put the cage with a little stick attached to the cage. And inside there was the banana on that stick. And that little stick is called scandalon. And what the trapper would put the cage and then would go and hide behind the bush. And then all of a sudden, as soon as he would hear, (laughs) the monkey would go. But you see, he was so smart that he would not go inside the cage. He would look and look and he would put his hand through the bars and would hold the banana and hold it and then he would try to take it out. But the banana was attached to the stick and the stick was attached to the cage and he would try to get it out and out and he couldn't. And he would get so frustrated that all of a sudden he would lose awareness of what happened around him. And that's when the trapper would come out from behind the bush and head the monkey and destroy it. If only that monkey had let go of the banana, he would be safe. And some of you are thinking, Audrey, what does that monkey have to do with us? You see, a Christian that gets a hold of an offense, of that scandalon, of that banana, of that offense, and refuses to let go of it, 
will be that just like that monkey. Because that offense, that person that did something or said something, that offense is not just a coincidence. It is a trap of the devil to get you. And so you see, if we only will let go of the offense, we could, we could get spared. But you see, we have to understand that that offense is the trap. Because what will he do? When we don't let go of their offense, you know the first thing that, that will happen in our lives? We will lose our witness. Because what did Jesus say in, 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 in John 13, 35? They will know me by the love that you have one for another. But you see, when you get offended, when you hold on to the offense and get offended for whatever reason, what happens? I just talked about it before, out of your heart will flow, you know, the abundance of your heart, your will, mouth will speak. And when you are offended, you stop walking in love. And when you stop walking in love, you lose your witness. Listen to that verse. You know, we talked about Hebrew 12 in verse 14, in verse um, 15, that said, see to it that you do not fall short of the grace of God and that no root of bitterness springing up cause trouble and contaminate me, me, many. But look at the verse right before that. In verse 14 of Hebrew 12, it says, Pursue peace with all people and holiness with that which no one will see the Lord. You see, when we heard that verse, what most people will tell you, if you don't forgive, if you don't love, if you don't walk in peace with everybody, God will refuse to fellowship with you. You won't see God. He'll turn his back on you. That is not what it's saying. Because you and I know that God loves us no matter what. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. But what that verse means, when you and I choose to hold on to that little trap, to that little scandal, on, to that offense, and we, 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 we stay offended, and we cease to walk in love by doing so, people around us cannot see God. He says, pursue peace and holiness. Why do we want to walk in holiness? Why do we want to walk in peace and in love? So that people around us can all see God through us. So that the first thing that the offense will do in our life, destroy our witness. Then it will stop God's blessing. I know what you're thinking. We, you see how religion has painted it? We thought if you don't forgive, God will have his arm crossed and said, if you don't forgive, I'm not going to forgive you and I'm not going to bless you. And you have people needing healing, needing the blessing, and they're there and they have that thought that it's God withholding the blessing. But it is not so. You and I know that all God has already blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Everything for life and godliness has already been given to us. But what happens when your heart is offended? 1 John 3, 21 says that if your heart condemns you not, you have assurance before God and whatever you ask, you receive. But take that around. If your heart condemns you, because you hold something, you hold that offense, you refuse to let go of it, your heart will condemn you. And that which God has already given, it is now impossible, there is no more assurance in your heart and it's impossible for you to receive what God has already given. Do you see it? That's the reason why in Mark 11, 20, 
You know, we, we, the Mark 11, uh, when it says, have faith in God, whoever speaks to the mountain, command it to be removed and cast into the sea, and that not in his heart, but believe that whatever he say, will, it will have it. it, it will have what he says, and when you stand praying, believe that you receive, and you shall have it. Yes. And then what does verse 25 says? And if you have ought, yeah. a little thing against anyone, Forgive. Forgive. Why? Because if you don't forgive, you'll stand in front of the mountain and there will be no assurance in your heart to speak to the mountain. When there is an offense in your heart and your heart condemns you, there will be no assurance, no confidence, no faith to receive what God has already given. I remember uh, 20, you know, 20, when I first got married, you know, I'd been a missionary, single, traveling by myself. And then I got married at the age of 36. <laughs> it's better to wait for the right thing. Yeah. Let me tell you. And then on the first year, I mean, that's the first year of my marriage. That's when I got attacked in my body time and time and time again. And I even got attacked with bone cancer. But I remember the first time when I got attacked with appendicitis, three, three days before we were getting ready to go into the jungles of Guatemala. And I'm at, I'm at home and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, Audrey, don't go to the hospital, stay home and receive your healing. It was not my first rodeo, so I knew. And so I'm, I'm in bed all night long. I'm in bed. I mean, and I prayed, I believed, I received. I mean, I knew I'm healed. But all night long, it's like a battle. It's a warfare. My body, the temperature goes higher and higher and higher. The pain intensify. My body is now under shock. It's going shaking like this. And I'm in bed all night long, and I look, and my husband has the peace of God. He's sound asleep. And I'm looking at him. And let me real, I'm getting angry. And I'm like, all oh my, I mean, I've been single all these years and I had to do it on my own and now I'm married and I have to do it on my own. And then the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he says, Audrey, what does, he said, do you believe you received? Yes, Lord. What does, my, you know, uh, 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 Mark 11, 23 says? So here I go. What does Mark 11, 24 says? So here I go. If you stand praying, you believe that you receive. I'm like, yes, Lord, I receive. And then I heard a little silence. <laughs> and what does Mark 11, 25 says? I'm like, oh, Lord. You know what I did? It didn't take me two hours fasting and praying. In a few seconds, I went and I shook my head. I said, honey, I am so sorry. Forgive me. I forgive you too. My husband is like, what? Doesn't matter. Go back to sleep. But what the Holy Spirit showed me, that in order for me, for my faith, to, to, for that assurance to uh, enable me to exercise authority, that faith that enables me to receive, I had to be willing to let go of whatever it was that was hindering my heart. I remember I was in Colombia one time. And I was ministering in a, in a church and I saw there a woman. I mean, she was walking with a walker. She had arthritis from the top to the little toe. And she was walking and every step you could tell she was in pain. Her fingers were all gnarled up like this. And she's walking like this with a walker and sitting down. And that night, for a reason or another, I just felt impressed to minister this message and that lady came back at the end running to the altar. And she said, Audrey, for when I was a young bride with little, small little babies, my husband ran out with another woman and abandoned me with the children. And she said, I was so hurt. I was so wounded that I told myself, I will never forgive him. I'll never forgive him. And right here, as she heard the message, and she said she had prayed for years. People had laid hands on her. She had, you know, fasted and prayed and cried out to God. Nothing seemed to work. And right there on her own, 
as she heard this message, she made a decision to let go of the stick, of the scandalon, of the offense. And without anybody praying for her or laying hands on her, she felt a power come all over her. And all of a sudden, she was totally healed. She came running. Not only was she healed, but she received the Holy Spirit also that day. Oh, glory to God. Amen. You see, because the Bible says that faith works out by love. But yet, if we choose not to walk in love and let go of that offense, it hinders our faith. You see, it has nothing to do with God. God on cross refusing to intervene. It has everything to do with our heart. It's silent in this Catholic church this morning. Do you see what I mean? Religion, we've seen people so, you know, telling God refuses to heal you until you forgive. No, God wants to heal you, but it's your own heart that will not allow you to receive. Oh, hallelujah. And you know, it, 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 we know also that when we refuse to let go of it, it affects our heart, it affects our joy and our peace. Have you ever met people that, you know, hold on to bitterness or hold on to offense? They have no more joy, no more peace. And sometimes 20 years later, they still talk about it. And then or all of a sudden, they feel totally separated from God. Not because God has moved, but because they have slowly moved away from that place of intimacy. Because God is love. Amen. And when you refuse to walk in love, you remove yourself from the love, the person who is love. Do you see that? 